Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer and this is Walk Time Blog number 7, the role of professional associations in the hyper-economy. Yesterday I was pointed on Twitter to an excerpt from a new book by a well-known futurist inventor and TV personality Mark Pesci, and the book is going to be titled The Next Billion Seconds, and uh, the general premise is about the role of uh, connectivity in society and how we are in a process at the moment of undergoing fundamental change as a result of better access to information, breaking down asymmetry in, um, in communication and a whole lot of other things like that. It looks like a really interesting book and it's a topic that I'm personally very interested in. In fact, I have a little secret personal project that directly ties into this that I've had in mind for quite a while and um, haven't yet had the time to pull off. I really want to see where this goes. So, Mark, keep writing. I want to see the result. So the excerpt that was referenced yesterday on Twitter was about the hyper-economy. And this is... Um, well, I'll give you the very basic premise before I get to the point of this. The story Mark tells is about collapsing the value chain of the existing economic structure by disintermediating uh, parties that currently provide value by uh, providing the value in other ways or making the value irrelevant and therefore shortening the chain between supply and demand. So the idea is that if you uh, want, as a consumer, want access to something you will have a smoother path to obtaining that from the original source, not necessarily going through all of the intermediates like distributors and retailers and things like that. So um, he talks about a number of stages that society goes through as it moves towards uh, what he calls hyper-economics, where there are very smooth transactions directly between supply and demand and uh, and you can get what you want when you want, essentially. And so the first stage uh, that he outlines, one of the stories he gives as an example of the role of communications in smoothing out um, transactions, is the uh, region of Kerala in India, which has a large fishing fleet. And um, in the days before mobile phones, what would happen is that fishermen would put out to sea, they would make a catch and they would then have to decide which port to go to in order to sell their catch. Now the thing was that there were a number of ports and a number of fishermen and they would make their decision based on personal knowledge of which ports had given them better prices in the past or which one was closer to them at the time or whatever. And the result was that the distribution of fish from the fishermen to the ports was very lumpy. You would have a situation where multiple boats would turn up at one port, no boats would turn up at another port, and in one in the port with all of the fish, the price for fish would be low because it, there would be an oversupply under demand. Conversely, where very few boats turn up, the price of fish would be very high. And so what happened was that with availability of mobile phones, fishermen would start to call around. Once they were out at sea, they'd made their catch, they would phone around, figure out which ports needed fish, and that's where they would go. So the system became self-adjusting, and uh, the prices evened out across all of the ports, and uh, fishermen went from, instead of having really good days and really bad days, went from having days that were much more consistent so their income became more predictable and generally the whole system improved and this took place because of breaking down the transactional friction um, of, of deciding where to take your fish and um, when I circulated the URL for this excerpt yesterday around the office at Internet Vision Technologies it was actually quite interesting because um, a little while later our quality assurance manager came up to me, and he's from India, and he said, that article made me homesick because I'm from Kerali, and I remember exactly what it's describing. And he was saying that 
on some days they couldn't buy fish at all because they simply weren't available. Other days fish would be really cheap. It was a personal testament that what Mark is describing is exactly correct. I thought that was pretty cool. So Mark then goes on to describe a number of series of development of removing friction using um, more and more sophisticated mechanisms to put people directly in contact with the source of whatever it is that they want. And that might be services, it might be goods, it could be all sorts of things. And um, there are a couple of interesting things here. One is that he postulates a future where um, if you want something done, then you have a very simple mechanism by which you can request that it be done and you will have it done essentially from the source. Now, as a generalization, um, I 100% agree that's the direction that we're going. What we're seeing now is a lot of those barriers to trade being broken down. So, um, the thing is though that a lot of jobs, now one, I should back up, one of the things he postulates is that um, perhaps in the future we will not so much have jobs as have gigs, like short term gigs. We may not stay at one particular job for years and years, we might work a few hours here, a few hours there, or maybe a week here, a week there, um, as the result of crowdsourcing uh, mechanisms like freelance.com. <clears throat> and I'm actually having trouble thinking of jobs where, uh, where that would work, at a, at a very fine-grained level at least. If you think about just about any position, there is a benefit to continuity that uh, you would lose in that situation. So even the simplest jobs, um, and the thing is that no matter what job I mention here, someone is going to have that job and they'll be insulted when I say it's simple. But if you think about um, jobs that you might bring a substitute in for, uh, for example a substitute teacher, then um, they will not have the knowledge of the history of uh, the particular students that they're dealing with, no matter how well laid out a curriculum is, it could be totally formularised with every day laid out, you can't simply substitute different teachers every day and have a good result. So or working on a building site. Um, that's a, there are many very skilled jobs on a building site and not just skilled jobs but you need to have knowledge of the overall project, the sequence of development, the history of what has happened up to that point, where things are. You can't just substitute people in. Um, now I'm sure that what he's writing about um, is a trend in society today and we are seeing things like the rise of websites specifically designed for providing quick and easy access in a like a bidding type marketplace for services including very skilled professional services so this trend is definitely there I agree with that sorry very noisy today lots of cars so, the role of associations. Now, in his um, treatise, Mark also mentions towards the end the need for communities of expertise. And this is part of the role of these markets um, that I was mentioning earlier that provide you access to a pool of resources so that you can hire um, experts in a particular field or um, hire people to do a specific job. The thing is that just about any job you can think of has um, good practitioners, bad practitioners, and people with good reputations and bad reputations. So as an outsider you don't necessarily know or have the mechanism by which to judge that. And that's where some of these um, crowdsourcing sites are really good. Because what they provide is, uh, is some kind of a peer and um, customer rating system where people build up karma and or experience points or whatever mechanism that particular site happens to use. You see this on lots and lots of sites. It's, um, it's also part of the gaming aspect of it where 
part of the objective is to build up your score in some way, you know, level up. It's, um, it's a very common tactic used to provide emotional buy-in to these sorts of services. And this is really where I see professional associations fitting in. In the future, um, professional associations will have far more of an opportunity to act as this community of expertise for their particular area. <coughs> Excuse me. And provide a mechanism by which consumers of a particular service may be able to um, review and source expertise. So, and I mean in far more than what is currently done, which is typically something like a member directory. Like say, for example, you want to find a plumber and you go along to the Master Plumbers Association website and you put in your postcode and it's got a find a plumber uh, mechanism. I mean, that's great, but that's only the start of the system. What you then need is far more involvement in the transaction itself so that the association can become part of the transaction, act as a mediator, well not really a mediator, more a, an enabler, so that it helps members of the public actually engage the services of that particular uh, of that particular industry. So I'm not quite sure how or uh, in what form this could take, but to me it looks like a logical extension of the role that associations already play. So I will be fascinated to see where this goes out. Now Mark, I love what you've written so far. Keep going. This is a great um, start and I really want to see the result. Thanks. See ya.